This is called the three foot world. I originally got this from rock climbing. So it's a rock climbing term, but it's also been applied to the military. The three foot world refers to being able to control what is within your control and letting go of what is not in your, uh, within your control. So picture this for a moment, all right? Let's say you are climbing the side of a mountain and you're free climbing, so you've got no safety gear. You let go, you're falling to your death. You've all seen those mad motherfuckers who scale cliffs without any fucking safety gear. All right, let's assume that you are halfway up the side of a cliff. Okay, you've got finger grips here, finger grips there, toes there, toes there, all right? What matters at that exact moment in time? Not dying. Yeah, how do we not die? What matters? Where can my next hand go? Where can my next foot go? Doesn't matter how far it is to the top because you have no control over that. Doesn't matter how far it is to the bottom. You have no control over that. The only thing you have control over in that exact moment in time is where your next fucking hand and foot are going. All right? That is where the term three foot world comes from because in that moment, the only thing that matters is what's within your reach, a three foot world. In the military, what I used to teach guys when I was instructing at Singleton is, let's say you're getting ready to kick in a door, you've got your whole team behind you, you've got your weapon, you cannot control what is behind that door. It could be a mother and children, or it could be a bad dude with a machine gun, all right? You can't control that. Whatever's behind there is behind there. What you can control is you can control your breathing, which means you can control your fine motor skills, which means you can control your weapon. You can control the equipment that you're wearing. You can control the room that you're in. You can control your team. You can't control what's on the other side of that door. So don't worry about it. Deal with it when the door opens and you go through it and it becomes a part of your three foot world, all right? This becomes a stress mitigation tool, especially in combat. SEALs and, uh, SEALs and Delta Force and SAS and Commandos practice it all the time because the more you can control your breathing and the more you can control your space and your three foot world, the lower your heart rate is gonna be, the more fine motor skills you've got, the more accurate your weapon drills are going to be. The more accurate your weapon drills are going to be, the better chance you've got of solving whatever's on the other side of that door. Okay? When we think about life in general, there are things that we can control and there are things that we cannot control. So this goes back to managing your perceptions. Managing your perceptions. You come across a stressful situation, whatever that looks like for you. You take 90 seconds, just 90 seconds, a minute and a half, and you do nothing but breathe. And I'm gonna explain this when we get to the breath work, but breathing is the gateway between your nervous systems. If you can control your breath, you can control your limbic brain. I've wiped it off, I'm pointing to a blank whiteboard. There was a limbic system up here, all right? Hey, that's right, just, just superimpose it over, okay? If you can control your breath, you can control your fight or flight. If you can control your fight or flight, you can control your cortisol levels, your adrenaline, your epinephrine, your norepinephrine. It all comes down to managing your perceptions and it starts with your breath. You're sitting in a stressful situation, whatever that looks like for you. You take 90 seconds, you breathe, long, slow, deep breath. Don't think about that situation, just focus on your breath and we'll talk about that more when we get into the meditation modules, okay? And after 90 seconds, reassess the situation and ask yourself this question. Does anything I think, say, or do change the outcome of this situation? If the answer is no, let it go. If you are sitting in traffic and you're fucking chewing on the steering wheel with rage, is anything you're going to think, say, or do going to change that traffic? Nope. nope. Just let it go. If the answer is yes, formulate a plan, execute, work through it. If the answer is no, let it go. Now it sounds easy in principle, but it takes practice, okay? 